And if I desire it, it must mean that deep down there's something about me that connects to this dream and start to ask yourself, am I doing this for me? Am I doing it because I want to? Or am I doing it because I'm expected to? I feel like it's okay for us to start accepting that failure is part of the human experience, especially so for women under 30 who are under a huge amount of pressure to make it in life at the speed of light. And we're not super women, we can only do so much. Hello there my gorgeous ladies and welcome back to my channel. I'm excited to have you all here today because we have a very interesting video and I feel as though some of you may resonate with one or two of these things because even as I was doing research there's some of the things that I did actually list in here that I am still working on and I feel like I will continue working on because as always life is all about learning, experiencing things and always being curious about the things that we can do to better ourselves in life in one way or another. So I hope that you have a glass of something delicious with you right now as I go through the list of 15 brutal truths that any woman under the age of 30 should be aware of sooner rather than later. So before I begin, I wanted to highlight that some of the things I'm going to mention, you may have already heard of from your parents, your peers, or maybe just in passing, and you probably thought, no, that does not apply to me. However, what I would like to challenge you during this video is that I would like for you to keep an open mind and to also think of the things that you could potentially be ignoring that could be holding you back from progressing and becoming a better version of yourself. As always, we're all about accountability on this channel and if there's anything that we can do for each other to help each other is to hold each other accountable so if there is anything in this video that resonates with you and that you will be working on please leave it in the comment section below and we can all perhaps give each other tips on how we are managing with this particular issue or this blind spot that we may have because some of these things are not necessarily new however it's just that we need to learn how to lean into the things that we are not naturally good at and then work on them and eventually they will become either our strengths or one of the things that we can teach other people about. As always, each one teach one. So the first of the 15 truths that every woman under the age of 30 should know sooner rather than later is that you need to learn how to love yourself. And hold on, don't tune out just yet. Really think about it. Half of the time, that we find ourselves heartbroken, devalued, or feeling like we are not being given the attention that we need, really and truly, when we look at it at its core, it's because we don't necessarily have or feel that love that we're seeking externally. But when you start to really understand what does it mean to love myself? How does it look like? How does it feel like? How do I know I'm loving on myself? Like really become curious about what it means to love on yourself fully. When you're able to actually spend time doing that, you will start to realize that in actual fact, every single thing that you do and every single action that you take comes from a place of either lack or love. And the more you actually function from a point of love, you are more likely to attract the right type of people, the right type of opportunities, and the right type of experiences in life. So this is why I put it right at the top because just about every single thing that comes after this is all anchored down by this theory of learning to love yourself is the beginning and everything else falls into place it's not about being selfish it's actually about being selfless to yourself first right this is honoring yourself first honoring what it is and what it feels like to be yourself and then adding on the rest after the fact so i just want you to know that this is one of the most important things for every young woman under the age of 30 to realize because a lot of us especially when you get past the age of 30 when you start to look back you start to realize that a majority of the experiences that you've had that you regret or that you wish you could have completely done away with tend to stem from a point of where you were seeking validation you felt a void and you went out there seeking it in the wrong friendships in the wrong relationships or even in the wrong jobs or even going into the wrong careers so this is why it's important to tap into yourself honor yourself and really understand your value as the main thing that will anchor you going forward now number two this one is knowing that love should lift you up it should encourage you it should show you compassion and love should be patient. And the reason why I say that is that in different parts of our lives, whether in friendships, family, or even romantic interactions, we sometimes fall into a 
season of trying to please people and win their love and win their validation and we forget that in doing that if we are not in a position where we feel abundance and that we feel that love is all around us and that we too are love hence why i initially mentioned that you need to learn what love means to you and what it means to love yourself if we don't come from that position, we end up in a place where we're chasing love and we're chasing validation and we may sometimes settle for less than what we deserve. So I really want you to explore what it means to be surrounded by the right type of people who show you compassion, who show you love, who show you patience and who really show you what unconditional love could look like. Because when you actually understand what that experience is like, you are less likely to be led into situations that are not fruitful for your spirit, your mind and your well-being. So I think this is very important for anyone to understand is that once you love yourself, is what type of energy and what type of love are you also entertaining into your circle? Because that can either make or break you. Today, tomorrow or later on down the line, it will eventually show that it's not a healthy place to be in so really think about what type of love are you entertaining and are you the type of are you also given the love that you want to receive number three surround yourself with supportive people if you are in a circle of people who make you feel lesser than who degrade your dreams who laugh at you when you speak about improving yourself and becoming better this isn't where you need to be as soon as you start to notice that the circle you've surrounded yourself with are not supportive and not willing to help you and guide you in the right direction just as you would do the same for them then the quickest and the best option you can give yourself is to withdraw from those interactions whether it's family friends or colleagues if you find yourself in that melting pot of just negativity and people who are not willing to help you do the best that you can to do away with those interactions so that you can go back to filling yourself up with optimism with love with wonder with with a sense of you know childlike wonder of what your life could be and so that you can actually stand a chance of making it in this life instead of spending it around people who are pessimistic and not willing to try at all so where possible surround yourself with people who are supportive and if that's not family and if that's not friends find yourself in a circle whether in a leisurely capacity or in an educational capacity Find yourself in a circle of people who are supportive and who are also working towards the same goals. You're more likely to succeed in that setting. Number four, your voice matters. Not just the tone of your voice, not just the sound of the voice, just the fact that you are an individual who has their own mind, who has their own opinion, who has their own lived experiences, that matters. You are valid. If you've grown up in an environment where your voice was stifled, you were not allowed to express yourself, you were not allowed to be yourself, I want you to know that that's not the way life should be. Where you can start to learn that you can harness your voice, you can train yourself to speak up. Even if you're an introvert, you can find other modes of communication to still put your point across and be heard and be assertive about what you believe in. The more you allow yourself to lower your tone and not to speak and not to show up, you're betraying yourself along the way. So it's very important to learn that your voice matters and that you should speak up. When you think that you're being wronged, you should speak up. When things are being done to other people that are also wrong, you should also speak up because this is part of your birthright. This is part of your human right. So I think this is very important for you to not only know, but to practice it and it takes time. And if you need help with that, that's where you can find coaches who can help you with communication skills and even find your friends who are better at communicating so that they can also help you with it. So please remember, in order for you to also show yourself love and to show other people love, you have to find your voice. You have to learn how to communicate effectively and over a long period of time, you will see that this is for your benefit more than your detriment. So don't be afraid to speak up. Number five, self-care is non-negotiable. And when I say self-care, I mean it in every aspect of self-care, physically, mentally, emotionally, and also spiritually. In every aspect, you really need to consider that if you are not feeling good, if you are not looking good, if you are not showing up good for yourself, then you're less likely to be able to do anything more for other people. And if you do go out of your way to do more for other people, you will be pouring from an empty cup. 
and worse yet you will be pouring from a point of feeling deprived within yourself and by the time you're giving to other people you may find yourself feeling better feeling resentful and also feeling regret for not looking after yourself first so i will not dwell on this one too much but i've got a few other videos where i talk about the importance of self-care as a 360 holistic approach as opposed to just the physical aspect of things but please 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 as you get older your physical a mental spiritual and emotional well-being be more and more challenged so you need to make sure that you run it like a tight ship as soon as possible don't neglect it thinking I will figure it out later start figuring it out now if you need therapists if you need people to assist you if you need medical help seek it out sooner rather than later self-care is non-negotiable number six invest in yourself this one I absolutely love because investing in yourself can happen and can appear and present in different ways. If that means going back to school, if that means investing in yourself and your fitness and health, if that means investing in networking opportunities so that you can meet a new circle of friends because the ones that you have are not in alignment with where you want to go. Invest in yourself in terms of learning financial literacy so that you can be better and well equipped going into your 30s. Investing in yourself is the best form of investment because when you invest in yourself, nobody can take that away from you. The education you put into yourself, nobody can take that away from you. If you invest in your health, nobody can take that from you. And it will only stand to benefit you more and more as opposed to taking away from you. So investing in yourself is definitely a win-win sum regardless of how you flip it. So I want to encourage you, if you've got an opportunity to invest in yourself, please go ahead and do so. You will not regret it. Number seven, learn that independence is liberating. Learn how to keep your own company, how to do things by yourself, how to enjoy life by yourself. There is something quite magical when you can be in your own presence and not feel alone. When you hear a lot of people complain about loneliness and you really speak to them, sometimes it's because they're so used to being surrounded by people, being surrounded by noise, being surrounded by distractions, that when they actually get a moment with themselves, they don't know what to do. So I would like to encourage you to find hobbies that you can do by yourself to just fill yourself up because as you fill yourself up, you will start to realize that life is very dynamic. You can enjoy yourself with other people you can enjoy yourself with your partner you can enjoy yourself with, with your kids and your family but also you can go into your innermost quietest place and still enjoy yourself being independent having your own finances having your own home having your own you know mode of transportation whatever independence looks like to you I want you to explore it and just figure out what healthy independence means and what it can add on to you so independence figure out what it means to you and also create a standardization for yourself for what you will be doing going forward to liberate yourself more with a dose of independence. Number eight, I touched on this very briefly when talking about investing in yourself, but it's about learning your finances and also becoming familiar with your finances. Regardless of which tax bracket you are in right now, you can still maximize the money that you have, even if you're paycheck to paycheck. Once you start to understand how your finances work and stop being afraid of your finances and talking about money and how you manage your money, you will find that it's not as scary as it initially looks. And even if you're not great at mathematics, there are tons and tons of apps out there that can help you to manage your money. And the reason why I'd like to emphasize on this, especially for women under the age of 30, is that we are in an age where credit is being thrown around left, right, and center. You can buy outfits, you can buy cars, everything on finance, which is absolutely great when you know what you're doing. But when you do not know what you're doing, you can find that you run the chance of getting yourself into debt and spoiling your credit before you've even had a chance to fully grow in your career and to fully grow in your finances. So the most important thing here is that if and when you can invest in financial literacy, you can find a ton of videos here on YouTube that can actually help you to navigate your finances as either a student or whether you've just had your first job or whether you are a young mother, whatever your situation might be, there is a 
video here on YouTube that can give you guidance on how to manage your finances so that you are not at a disadvantage when it comes to your finances. Because the sooner you figure it out, the sooner you can start making plans to not only improve it, but to also start stacking up your money so you can have and live the life that you desire. So investing in your finances is something that every single woman should be doing regardless of your age. But more importantly, start as early as you can. Start to make yourself feel at ease with money. Start to understand that money is your friend. It's a tool. It's not your God. It's not your everything. It's your tool and it's your tool for you to have the life that you want. Number nine, your career is a journey, not a race. If you're somebody who is in the corporate environment and at the moment you are trying to figure out what you want to do, I would like to encourage you to give yourself the grace to explore what you genuinely want to do. Look at the options that you have. Look at the things you genuinely want to do. Do they align with who you truly are? But of course, if you are in the season of just stacking up and making what you can in order for you to perhaps explore things outside of the corporate environment, also let that be very clear to yourself so that you don't find yourself in a rat race trying to be and do and have what other people have keeping up with the joneses when really and truly that wasn't your plan so i think when it comes to career it's good to take a step back and start to ask yourself am i doing this for me am i doing it because i want to or am i doing it because i'm expected to and in doing so you're then able to really shape and align the path that you're going down as opposed to just accepting things for the way that they are number 10 failure is not the end just because you have failed at something that you've tried it doesn't mean it's the end look at failure as an opportunity to learn look at it as a stepping stone look at it as you understanding one of the ways that you have attempted and will not be able to succeed at whatever it might be that you were trying to do I feel like it's okay for us to start accepting that failure is part of the human experience. Whether that's a failed business, that's a failed enterprise of some sort, that's a failed friendship, that's a failed relationship. It's okay to accept that failure is part of life. And the sooner you accept it, the quicker you will be to fail forward and fail quicker until you get to the point where you find what it is that you want to do that you find what it is that is in alignment with you so i think this one i would really like for us to understand and maybe even read up on some literature on how other people in the past have indeed gone out there tried things failed started again and maybe not even after the fifth maybe after the tenth attempt manage to make their win manage to get their success so it's very important to understand that failure is part of the process and just don't be afraid of it because the more you focus on it the less likely you are to actually start doing anything so this is something that i think is important for not just any body but especially so for women under 30 who are under a huge amount of pressure to make it in life at the speed of light take your time and also enjoy the process number 11 learn how to support and lift other women up be the kind of person that sees other people doing good and encourages them be the kind of person that when you do actually see somebody else succeed and you see them putting in effort you celebrate them because in celebrating people and appreciating them you're opening up your heart space to be able to connect with more people who are just like you so if you find yourself being resentful or even begrudging other people for having success or having made it before you step away and ask yourself what you need to work on or what you need to align with because clearly there's something that is missing within yourself that is not allowing you to open your heart and to be able to connect with other people because as we lift each other up as women we're stronger we're also more vibrant and better yet we're able to do more as we network with people who are like-minded so consider opening yourself up to not only connecting with other women but also to lifting them up number 12 you are stronger than you know and you are far more resilient than you give yourself credit for life will come at you fast and life may come at you hard and you don't necessarily know what to do and at times you may question why me why must i be the person who's burdened with this type of life or with this type of challenge but i want to encourage you to start asking yourself why not me there must be a reason why this particular trial and tribulation has come my way and i must have a particular set of skills to be able to overcome it and if i don't 
must there must be something within me that I can refine to be able to overcome it. I want you to be open and receptive to the fact that it's not everything in life that comes your way that is not meant for you. Sometimes it comes to you to refine your character, to shape your character, and to also allow you to understand that you're made of tougher metal than you think. And this may be the first hurdle of many to come in the future. So it's almost like an introduction of can you make it through this? And if you can make it through this, maybe the next challenge will be easier and easier. And you, in a way, you strengthen that muscle and you become somebody who is not only resilient, but is somebody who has trust and faith in their ability to do whatever they need to do to get through life. Number 13, although this can be very tricky and to be quite honest, sometimes balance sounds and feels like a myth in this life, but where possible, Find a way to prioritize the things that really matter to you. Even if it's just allocating half an hour or an hour, find a way to balance things out. And I know that there's some seasons where some things take more of our attention and energy than others, which is perfectly fine and it's understandable. But it's a matter of the other things that are kind of taking a back seat. Do you still find time to water them? So if your career is taking the front seat because you, you want to perhaps get promoted or you, you maybe want to get the skills that you need in order to move out of the role that you're in, are you still tapping in and connecting with your friends and your family? How are you prioritizing your time? There are many, many tools, again, here on YouTube and also online where you can look at and it can help you start prioritizing your time just on a theoretical basis. I know practical is very different, but at least just to get things down, pen to paper, how am I going to be doing things? Can I do this better? Can I delegate something so that I can get back some of my time? Because again, we're not super women. We can only do so much. The quicker you learn this at an earlier age, the more peace you will gain back for yourself because you're not trying to be everything to everyone all the time. So this one is very important because you will find that as life starts to demand more of you, there's going to be less of you to give to these things. You spread yourself too thin. Everything is a continuous journey and us trying to, to work and develop ourselves. But this one in particular, I would say is very tricky for majority of us, myself included. <laughs> Number 14, this one is a fun one, but honestly, it's a reality check for every single one of us. Dream big and do not let anybody tell you your dreams are unrealistic and that your dreams are invalid. There are many people out there who can attest to people shutting down their dreams, people telling them that you are not able to do this, you cannot do this. Do you know which family we come from? Do you know what our background looks like? You cannot attain that. Yet they have gone to prove it, not only to themselves, because that's the most important person you need to prove it to, yourself, but they have subsequently proven it to people who were naysayers time and time again. So I want you to write down your dream, make it clear, make it plain, and trust that at some point with every single day and every single bit of effort you put into it, you will eventually see your dream come to fruition. So continue to dream big. As you're doing your day to day, sit down, give yourself a moment to look at your dream, sit down, give yourself a moment to look at your vision of the future. Can I really see myself there? Is that the lifestyle I desire? Is that the home that I desire? Is that the family that I desire? Is that the job that I desire? And if I desire it, it must mean that deep down there's something about me that connects to this dream and this may potentially be my path. Although I don't quite know how I'm gonna get to it, I am here, my dream is here, but this in between part, I don't know, but I am trusting the process. So continue to dream big and be unapologetic about your dreams and your desires. Number 15. This one is just a wake-up call for all of us, is remembering that life is finite and that our time here, our days here, they're all numbered. And it's good to remind ourselves of that when we are so stuck in our mind and afraid to move forward and afraid to start and afraid to do things. But I want to encourage you to, while you're dreaming big, while you're, you're writing the grand plans of your life, to remind yourself that I need to get a move on. I need to, to take action. I need to be unafraid of what people say. I need to remember that because I am valid and because I know my value and because I know where I can be in life, 
I am going to keep pouring into myself day in and day out. And eventually I know that what I have and what is in alignment with me will take hold and I will see and live to see the life of my dreams before me. I don't ever want any of us to get to a point where we are in our 80s and our 90s and we look back at all the missed opportunities all because we were afraid to take the leap. If we are privileged enough to live to 70, 80 and 90, we will also have the opportunity to look back at the life we've lived. And the question is, will you look back at the life you lived and think, oh my goodness, I did really well for myself and I actually took action. Even though sometimes I failed, at least I took action. Even though sometimes things didn't go to plan and sometimes people betrayed me along the way and sometimes things did not ex exactly work out the way I wanted them to, at least I took a chance on me. Or will it be a list of shoulda, woulda, coulda? Which one would you rather? The one where you took the opportunities or the one where you barely done anything and then now you're looking back thinking, what could I have accomplished? So there you have it. 15 brutal truths that every woman under the age of 30 should wake up to. And I hope that you have enjoyed this video and most importantly that something has resonated and if there is something from the list where you feel you need to work on and you need to develop, I am hopeful that you will take the necessary action to honor yourself and give yourself the fighting chance to have the best life yet. So if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll have a few more videos here that you can enjoy. And until next time, my gorgeous ladies, bye-bye.